Here's the usual lame California fire report. Notice how they didn't ask Schwarzenegger why California continues to allow the construction of flammable homes on arid hillsides. And David, we've got some breaking news we've been following out of California. Of course, we got new information just this afternoon about what caused at least one of the massive fires we've been keeping an eye on. While firefighters are making good progress at controlling the biggest of the fires known as the Station Fire, there is still concern about changing conditions that could hurt progress. NBC's Chris Jansing is live at Lakeview Terrace, California at the Fire Command Post with the very latest. Good afternoon, Chris. Good afternoon, Tamron, and this is the first time we've gotten any indication from officials about what might have caused this blaze, and obviously investigators are working feverishly. They want to know if a criminal act was involved, and clearly they have a vested interest in it because two firefighters were killed. In addition to that, the blaze has already burned through an area about the size of Chicago. It's cost to date $21 million plus to fight, and there are new areas that are being threatened, including some around Pasadena. This is an area of very very steep terrain. It's a dangerous and difficult area to fight fires. And of course, that's an area that everybody knows because the Rose Bowl is there and that's where the Rose Bowl parade is held. Let me bring in Michael Oku, who has been following this story for us throughout. And Michael, let's start first with this idea that this may well have been a human cause of this fire. Yeah, well, the, the, the clear thing about this at this point is officials don't really know, but they're taking a look at it. And one of the places that they're taking a real look at where this thing ignited is uh, uh, on the mile 29 marker of the Angeles Crest Highway. Now, this is a roadway that runs north to south in the Angeles uh, in National Forest. It's a, it's a remote area. They're taking a look at a turnout there. So this is not a spot where there would be campfires, where you'd have people assembling or anything like that. And they're taking some, some chemical soil samples. They're testing out that area because they're working on the theory that something might have ignited right at that spot. It's one of the areas they're taking a look at, and uh, they're trying to determine the cause but they're pretty certain that this might be one of the areas where this fire ignited. Now, good news is that they made a lot of progress overnight. They went from 5% contained to 22% contained, and yet they're also looking at the possibility of other evacuations, other areas of concern. Yeah, that's right. I mean, this you mentioned the fact that this is the size of Chicago. The, the fire is a monster. It's far from over yet. Uh, clearly, firefighters are concerned about uh, where this thing is going to go. It's been moving in multi multiple directions. The place they're going right now is the southeastern flank of the fire. Uh, they're trying to protect the foothills right above the communities of Altadena and Pasadena and a little bit to the east uh, in Sierra Madre. They're fighting the fire there. They believe that that's going to be a front and they want to make a stand right there. And they're doing it in 12 hour shifts. These guys are tired. Michael, thanks so much. Sure. In fact, this could become, if it continues as it's expected, one of the 10 largest wildfires in state history. So that gives you an idea of the scope here and earlier today the governor Arnold Schwarzenegger came in here's a little bit of what he had to say after having breakfast with the firefighters I'm so proud as governor to have the best the most courageous the toughest most experienced firefighters in the world I uh, was glad to uh, be able to serve breakfast today give them a lot of spinach and protein so they, so they get all pumped up for the next fight out there with, the, with, the, with those fires. That's not me. Yeah, one of the lighter moments here, but obviously there's a very serious message and fire officials told us at that briefing just a couple of hours ago, there are still 10,000 people who are under threat just from this station fire, 5,000 buildings. And one of the people who knows this all too well is joining me. Her name is Heather O'Connor. She, her family, and their three cats have been out of their house for three days into hunger, right about three or four miles from here. Yes. Tell yes. us a little bit, Heather, about your story. What happened and when did you have to get out? You should ask her well, why she was Dumb enough to buy a flammable home. We heard that the firefighters and the police were going through my community and telling people to get out. And so rather than waiting till the last minute that they were at our doorstep, we decided to pack up and just get out. It must have been so scary. Oh, it was very scary. And all of us, I guess, have gone through this in our mind. What would we pack up? What would we absolutely take with us? Yeah. What was that process like? Oh, it was, you always think about it. And then when that moment came, I couldn't think of anything. I just grabbed all of my necessities. I grabbed a couple of pictures off the walls and made sure we had 
the family and the cats and we got in the car and we left. And so what, what's happening now? Where are you staying and, and what are you doing? Just sitting by the TV, seeing <laughs> if you can catch a glimpse of your house? Pretty much. We're staying with friends in South Pasadena, thankfully, and we've just been glued to the television trying to watch. I was able to go back up near my house to take some pictures Monday night and I had to leave. It just was so horrifying to see the hill right behind my house on fire. Yeah, l l let me ask you about that. How close is it and what is that experience like to oh. see that bearing down on your house? It was within a half mile and it was the smoke was so thick and there was so much ash. I had a mask on and eventually I just had to leave. I just couldn't watch it anymore.